Let's talk about R. Kelly. Oh, the feds done oh, scooped him up. Yeah. Let's go to the audience first. <laughs> what y'all think about R. Kelly and the feds getting him? Yeah, what y'all think Well, <laughs> I'm from Chicago. So oh, Lord. He cool with me. Hey. Oh, oh, even I'm though he's allegedly a no, rapist no and, a, and a pedophile. You know, you you have no, to, it well, with me, you have, to separate, with you have to separate what he do behind closed doors versus his music. His music is bomb. But mm-hmm. what he do behind closed doors, I do not approve. I don't like. But that's my boy. Oh, I plead the fifth. Honest caller. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I plead the fifth. My name Bennett. I ain't in there. Oh, hey, yeah. you're a fan. <laughs> Look, I'm still hating because I wish I was the 15 year old that hit Pass his the ass mic. up <laughs> immediately. <laughs> oh, take it from like, her hand. Y'all do <laughs> it. And don't I'm leave your that. social media information. <laughs> oh my God. I was not ready. I was so I'm not, not really like with us. Yeah, they, they, I was not ready. They, they, okay. Lit. <laughs> okay, first of all, the, R. Uh, Kelly. Hello, Kelly. hello. It's on, it's on, it's on. Go, so it's on. Can y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Uh, yes, yeah. we hear you. Oh, okay. But now I'm not with the R. Kelly situation, the whole pedophile situation, no. But I just watched a video about two days ago. There's a lot of congressmen, Republicans, conservatives who have done a lot of um, pedophile work in the the 90s, 80s, oh, and 2000s. So yeah. my thing is, if we're going to get R. Kelly, we need to get all of them, even with <laughs> Donald Trump. Wow. But he's still a great artist. Mm-hmm. But I do not support what. So what see, he that's does. my problem. Well, I not. Because some of my uh-huh. man, I be in these zones DJing. And I'm like, oh man, I'll just slip in that step in the name. Hey. Of yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do that because I don't know how the crowd is gonna receive right. me. Like indeed, seriously, indeed. how do they react now like, when they when they hear R. Kelly's song? She don't man, play. I don't even play it no more just because I don't want nobody yeah. to be like, oh, boo. But right, but right, literally right. the mood. If you think about all the songs that R. Kelly has from a kind of laid back R&B groove like that's our whole era right yeah. Yeah. so yeah, once all we're the playing songs, any any music in that era how could yeah. we not play R. Kelly right. music so it just goes straight in and I'm like oh I would just no nah, let me I not do it, it. I, I don't that. need no eggs thrown at me <laughs> right and I'm gonna tell you what happened when R. Kelly was played in a club that I was at recently Ooh, tell me. it got they the DJ got booed and he cut that shit off at I the end the of the right day, choice. I hear what y'all saying. He is still talented, but the man is sick. Yep. You got okay? to and, and I hear yeah. and you have to hold people accountable. And I and I hear what y'all saying about, you know, y'all know y'all mic on. We the the thing is is that yes, there are Republicans and, and Democrat politicians, other people who have done this, but we're talking about R. Kelly right now. And and as a member of, of, of black culture, we have to as a community hold him accountable. And we can't give him no pass for this. This is not cool. Speak. Like there this is this is really real. Like this is on video. We knew this 10, 15 years ago, right. but we didn't stand up and protect black right. girls. Right, right, right. So we gotta hold ourselves accountable too. Right. And so I applaud you yep. for not playing his music anymore. And I do understand he was a ta- he is a talented man. We can't take that away from him. But what we can take away from him is our our love and our and our respect for him in terms of being a man and being an upstanding citizen. Because he you is want not because yeah. it's still some people they like if you like the girl that bailed him out the first time, she's gonna love him to the day she dies. And that's fine. So. She but if it was her, her like daughter, if it was her daughter getting getting pissed on, she wouldn't be Ooh. feeling that way. Right. Wait, that's, no, what's that, that called? They got word for that. You know, that's a fetish. I golden, forgot what golden it's called. Shower. Golden shower. Oh. They got a lot of people golden in the private. But fifteen year old, then it's a pet, pedophilia. Oh, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's issues. Because so that was because I don't care if that was my fifteen year old daughter. Oh, you getting your ass? Well, you getting killed? Are you kidding yeah, me? Up. Right. And straight don't up. forget the parents, no. Yeah. 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 God bless him. Yeah. All God of them. So, you know, you can either free R. Kelly or hate R. Kelly. You know, fuck R. Kelly. How about that? Okay. Man, his time. I, I would. I would. I would. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> his time has come crazy. and passed at this point. <laughs> right. Oh, shit. On that note. Shut up, horse. <laughs> let's go into the WNBA. Oh, Lord. What about it? Portia. <laughs> what's the girl name? The girl that looked like a. Uh, a roach. What's what's her name? Oh, man, not a roach. <laughs> no, because I'm pissed off. First of all, you're supposed to be an upstanding <laughs> commu- woman of the LBGQZRZ community, 
And then you out here in the public eye on a platform such as the W. NBA, NBA, how you say? Yeah, WNBA. WNBA. Okay, yeah. And you out here beating on women, and you're a woman. I mean, you you beating on women, and you're a woman yourself. Oh, I must that have happens this in no, that happens in LGBTQ uh, relationships a lot. Domestic and her name, by the way, y'all, is Rakuna. I believe the way you pronounce it, Rakuna Williams. So she's been suspended for ten games yeah, after being convicted to. for domestic violence charges. But you know, we've seen this in football. Mm-hmm. We've seen this yeah. in well, like we've seen this across the board. Yeah. So I mean, it's just heartbreaking, and and just the. The whole idea of domestic violence and, you know, people go through that and there is post-traumatic stress, you know, from oh, that. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, it, and you carry it with you. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, right. not to go too much into detail, but, I mean, I've experienced that myself. And so I know the weight of that. So I applaud the WNBA for holding her accountable mm-hmm. and for uh, suspending her, you know, and, and, you know, punishing her publicly as she should be. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your truth because I know you're a survivor as Oh, well. yeah, I'm definitely a survivor. Been there, done that. Right. Um, it's a cycle. I'm not sure who the young lady um, – her partner is Mm -hmm. but i mean there's a great chance that because i don't know the story but there's a great chance that if she is in that cycle she'll probably go right back to her so 10 game suspension or not um you know that's just the cycle that we have to break and it doesn't matter (laughs) if it's the lgbtq community (laughs) if it's the straight community it does not matter it's the same cycle domestic violence yeah Yeah. it's real it's because real. I'm such a, a tough person, and I've been in a relationship like that, and I actually it makes me teary eyed, but I'm not gonna cry. But it's just like for somebody to be like an adult, and for them to put their hands on you, oh, yeah. and you like love them, and they love you. It's just it's sucky. It's emotions, and that's what I always thought. Um, you know, with females, right? We're such emotional beings that I know, like I have done no research, but I can just imagine the heightened emotions involved with two females together you know like i'm emotional i try to control it but shoo me being in a relationship with another female i could just imagine having my emotions and her emotions males a little bit different right i would say men are equally emotional they just don't express it absolutely you're right you're right you're right right. right. i didn't let you finish that yep you're right they just don't express it. it and so you know it's we Men, express it. We just express it in different ways. Yes, you know in different I mean? ways. You're yeah. right. In different ways. That's true. That's true. But yeah, pay attention to your friends. I mean, we have yes. t- testosterone, and women have estrogen. Yes. So we have t- both. Have both. You have estrogen inside of you. Yes, but which one as is well as testosterone. Okay. Well, some women got more. Um, <laughs> I you digress. Know, but, right. <laughs> right. but at the end of the day, what it's all about is emotional wellness. Yeah. Right. And that when you have trauma, childhood trauma, um, and then you try to go out and be an adult and carry on a relationship, and you're not healthy, and, and you haven't healed wounds within you, then that comes out you on your partner. You lash out in different ways. You lash out in different ways, exactly. Yeah, and what I noticed as well in domestic violence cases, a lot of it has to do with not only emotion, but control issues. Yeah, you know, right. uh, being very obsessive. So if people have um, any characteristics of being very controlling mm-hmm. and things like or that, or codependent, like, that should be a red flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a very codependent on you. Um, that's a red flag. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. run. <laughs> that's yeah. advice. Yes, get the hell on. The people will entrap you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They will. Yeah. They Emotionally will. entrap you. So they let will. me ask you this because I'm, I think we're pretty much done with the hot topics. We are. And I would that like to good. get to that's know a good you transition. more. Um, where, and I don't want to get into it, but were you going through the issue while you were in the public eye? No, I okay. was not. Yeah, that okay. was prior. So my issue that I was dealing with with, with my ex-husband was prior to me actually becoming an, ent- an entertainer. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was not in the public eye. Okay. Did Dang that kind of give Would you, you say strength it was a catalyst? and motivation? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, it did. Okay. It did. At the same time that I made that decision to move forward um, was when my father passed away in 2010 oh. and after he passed away the craziest thing i'll keep it short um but after he passed away it was like going into the second year and 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 like he is like my biggest fan like i love my dad i'm a daddy's girl and my mom came to me one day and she was like girl because i was still married at the time but i was going through divorce she's like girl you know your dad went to his deathbed and he was scared for you. I said, what are you talking about? Like, he's my biggest fan. Like, I always try to just be this shining star for him. She, she said, he went to his deathbed worried that that man was going to kill you. Mm. Oh, I said, what? Damn. She was like, yeah. Right. 
as well as your sisters, they just never told you anything. But mm-hmm. the whole family was worried. And I'm like, no way. Not my dad. Like, I could care less about anybody else right. but my dad. Right. It's like, yeah. So at that moment is when I decided enough was enough. I got a whole nother perspective on life. And he was right because it was times where I felt like if he hit me the wrong way. Right. And at first, <sighs> I'm aggressive. I played women's uh, professional tackle football. You know, I didn't want to instigate, wow. but I know how to defend myself. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but after a while, it just got to the point where I was trying to defuse locked doors, like remove myself, right. like not say anything. And it still didn't work right? because it was... I need to find a trigger for her. I'm going to keep saying stuff, keep saying mean stuff. I'm going to break down the door if I need to to get in the, um, the bathroom or the bedroom. Like, it's that kind of stuff. So it's more of a mental play. That's why it says emotions is one thing. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. being stuck in that cycle, it becomes something that they mm. get like a kick out of. Mm-hmm. Not funny kick, but it becomes like, hey, I got to do this or I got to go smoke another blunt. I got to go shoot up one more time. It becomes a disease for real. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm glad to see that you took that negative and you're helping so many women, so many youth. You're involved with the Boys and Girls Club. (laughs) You're a motivational speaker, inspirational speaker. Like, how did you get into that? (laughs) Honestly, going through the things that I went through and I shared on Ready to Love, the show that I was on, I shared um, a lot, but of course, a lot of things got cut. But that's the reason why I even took the opportunity on that show was, Mm -hmm. you know what, now it's time for me to have a platform because so many people just look at my Instagram, my social media, my website, um, or my interviews and stuff, and they're like, oh, she's da 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 No. (laughs) No. Like, they would never imagine that I came from the hood. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and what I've been through. And, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. We can do, like, a two-hour show, and right. I can just go And we on see and you on. in the community, working yeah. with the kids, Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and that's very important. Like, a lot of people always ask me, they're like, um, you know, you're always that ear to listen to. You're always that person that people go to to get some type of advice or guidance. And I tell them, I'm like, yes, but I would prefer to do that to children. Right. Because they have not conformed yet, for the most part. Right. They they can be changed they can be influenced you just got to show them and say the right thing and put them on the right path they're going to do what they want to do regardless that's what people don't understand about children i don't get it they're like oh my child is not going to eat any pork really (laughs) my child is going to be straight they will never be gay (laughs) really (laughs) like how long you think you're going to control your child so they're heavily influenced but at the end of the day they're so smart that's why i love mm-hmm. spending time either coaching the mm-hmm. youth giving back at the boys and girls club and their answers if y'all just listen to these kids i'm talking Look about sixth answers. graders right. how they actually respond and articulate themselves and you think they don't listen and see tv and cardi b and everything mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. man they're they are so intelligent y'all right. so that's why right. i choose children and the youth versus you know, trying to do a lot with the adults because it's difficult with adults. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, your passion for music? Have you always had that? I know that you said that, you know, your dad passing was a catalyst yeah. and leaving your ex-husband was one of those things that pushed you on to go ahead and do it. But have you always had that love for music? Where does that come always from? Always had that love, y'all. My mom um, was a singer. She was a Caribbean soca singer. Oh, nice. Wow. Um, with the Mighty Sparrow way back in the day. But she gave up her career to actually have her children us mm-hmm. um, and then my dad was just an avid lover of all genres of music so we used to listen to everything mm-hmm. then we moved from Trinidad and Tobago to New Orleans when I was in like third grade and y'all know New Orleans is a melting pot right. Absolutely. it's so right. cultural so diverse from a music perspective um, jazz bounce music we have our own genre of music um, But also, our rap music was pretty hard back then. So at 12 years old, all we knew was listening to how we going to kill somebody, what drug we going to smoke, kidnapping people and putting them in U-Hauls. Like, yeah, yeah, it's bad. It's real New Orleans music. It's really, really bad. But it's what we are influenced by is our immediate surroundings because most of New Orleans is a very poor, poor, poor city. Yeah. I remember... um, I want to say 1993 or 94, we were studying, and the median family income was like $23,000. Wow. $23,000. Median family income. (laughs) $23,000. That's probably what, a family for a family of four? Yeah, yeah, probably um, three plus or, yep. But I tell you, just thinking from that mindset of 
that's the median income and that's for the average in the city just imagine how the city operates and what they grew up from from an educational perspective what they were exposed to um you know and then we can go on to like the levees and breaking of the levees and the flood and and people didn't get out why you didn't evacuate because they couldn't because right. we depend on public transportation what you right. mean right. And what's the difference did you see between the new orleans scene whenever you were in the, in the atlanta scene that you in now from a music perspective yeah man i really feel like new orleans broke out with cash money Master P and them, like they really put the stamp on yeah, yeah. for New Orleans. The problem, for the South, yeah, for the South, yeah, really, right. truly. Um, and so the Atlanta scene, I feel like, is just highly competitive. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a melting pot versus a very organic type of music. Like we had bounce music, we created the stunning music kind of thing with yeah. Birdman and Wayne yeah, and the Hot that. Boys and and Master P, but. I feel like Atlanta, it's just so diverse. It's a melting pot. There is no true organic music that comes out of Atlanta. Trap music. Uh, wait, well, you know what? That is true. And I will tell y'all right now that I feel that when Banner produced um, T.I.'s. Trap music. Yep. Yeah. Rubber Band Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was my song. That's yeah. when yeah. trap yeah. music began. I don't yeah. care what nobody said it's some about Southern Hugger. His about debut it. album was, that's I'm serious. Gucci Man. I would say that's the name. Nah. No. For the name no, trap we won't. movie, we won't. you know, trap, you know, music. I think, you know, he, I think he created the genre. But they've been talking about trapping for it. We got ghetto mafia. We well, got. We talking about trap me. music. Well, well, that's you true. That's true. That's well, true. I'm just saying, as far as but also putting ghetto, the label on it. Okay. Ghetto okay. mafia is yeah. not a popular group. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 But, uh, <laughs> but it's the same thing as twerking, right? But right. Right. So twerking, like. There's an artist, a New Orleans bounce artist right. called Cheeky Black. In yep. 1993, mm. she released her song called Twerk oh, Something, yeah. T-W-E-R-K. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then Molly come, now everybody want to twerk. Yeah, what? Right. <laughs> yeah. My great-grandma was twerking. 